So either the beloved cabinet, tell us what is in here. Well, if, depending on the order of your seeing this video, you'll know, as I did mention, as well as doing photography and selling equipment, I also collect. So it's a little bit like a, a habit or almost a drug, I suppose, because things come my way through the business and I can't bear to part with them. The items in here are not necessarily the rarest in the world or the first or the last or the best. It's there, some of them are, but some of them, it's also just because I like them. And that's the reason, you know, what's better than to collect something because you, you like it. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's worth millions. None of this is worth millions, obviously. I'm very fortunate came my way to purchase, which is, this is my oldest Leica camera. The serial number on it is 555. Spoke to Leica in Germany, where they now have a museum at Wetzlar. They sent me a copy of the, I suppose the delivery sheet, for want of a better word. And next June, next year, this camera will actually will be 100 years old. It has what's called an L-Max lens. This is prior to and producing the L-Mar lens, okay? And also, again, for the people out there like me, the nerds, I suppose, the wind-on knob and the rewind knobs are much lower profile. And in fact, if you wound, if I wind it on, I don't know if you'll be able to pick up on this sound. It sounds a little bit like an old clock being wound. I thought I That big, this has got charted. That's how the early ones were, okay? And at some point, in life if you wanted or later on like I did offer to upgrade your camera at one of those it's also a very early three digit number this one was returned to Leica and someone had the Elmar lens fitted there's a much smoother and quieter shutter mechanism and the larger wind on and uh, rewind knobs have all been changed now that's all as original that had been upgraded I do have one, I suppose, if you want to call it, that I'm very pleased to own. It doesn't look like a lot. It's actually the first monochrome. When I say the first, the serial number is P001. So it's pre-production beta testers camera, but it is number one of the first type. So, you know, having the first monochrome uh, is quite a thing for me. I'm very pleased to own that camera. I also have, if you'd like to show this, it looks like a black paint M6. Quite a lot of people think it's a millennium. It's not, it's actually, again, if you look at the serial number, it's P0017. It was the beta testers camera for the MP, the modern MP. And the reason it says M6 on it is if you happen to bump into him in the street and say, oh, what's that camera? And he'd say, oh, it's just an M6 that like were painted for me. In fact, he wasn't, he was testing the MP camera. So, right, it's number 17. I do have original black paint M3, okay, M4. I've even got, I say even got, Lights New York, if you know the badge on here, which is basically the battery box and a motor on an M4, okay. Um, which is also, it's an M4M, so it's a motorised M4. I managed to find the motor first of all online, then fortunate enough to find the camera, I mean that came in via the shop, and eventually found the battery box, so I was able to put all these together. Um, they are obviously all matching, but it wasn't bought as one unit, but not something you see every day. Black Chrome M4, it's just in very nice condition with the box that we briefly mentioned before about an a la carte, a la carte, almost a contradiction. And what enters on that one? That's got the 514 Summer Lux spherical, so whilst it looks like an old fashioned lens, it had modern glass inside. So I do, I'm fortunate enough to have an M3 in its box, brand new, never had a roll of film in it. It came along with a 50mm close focus. Again, somebody bought these items in the 60s and they were just put under a bed, never used. It also came along with a, a spherical 3514, 
That's this one as opposed to ASPH, which now there's hell of a market for. There's various other cameras, they're just in extremely nice condition. That's why I've chosen to keep them. I also do have a bit of a fascination for things like cutaways or things that are sliced in half. These are two trial miles at a 90mm lens. I just love the engineering point you get to see inside the cameras. So those fascinate me. Some other items here that have had a little bit of a history, I suppose, the best way to describe it. There's an M6 up there where the serial number predates the numbers that are shown. This has actually been verified by Leica because they took the very last or towards the last of the M42s, used the cameras and converted them into M6s. So it is a genuine M6, it's actually been verified by uh, Stefan Daniels in Leica in Germany. There's an M6 there that has been up Everest with a famous newspaper. Uh, I've actually got a picture of the camera at the top of Everest or the picture it took. There's another M6 in there. Well, those two have had a sort of formal, the word is like issue. One belonged to Nan Golding and one belonged to Kustar. That's an M4P. So they've got a little bit of history behind them. This kit down there used to belong to so we're talking about the kit in the bottom in the bottom yeah which is sort of cabinet unfortunately you haven't got the space to lay it all out um this kit belong came my way and it actually belonged to a ringmaster in uh came from the circus in the middle east he's actually got an obe or an mbe we could look in double check it, it was actually a, sort of a british spy and the book is actually the producers he did the photography, someone else wrote it. It's all about the Middle East and it's all the images that he took using his Leica equipment. Um, as I mentioned before, not everything Leica. This is a collection of Reed and other English lenses. So it's quite, there's a little bit of a tie to Leica there. Uh, so this is all British, if we want to call it Leica copies. Um, that's where that equipment is there. Um, these are quite interesting. This is a camera called the Ilford Witness. And what this is to do with these two cameras here, okay? We all associate obviously the name Ilford with film. One gentleman left, made his way to Switzerland, made his way from Switzerland to England, went to see Ilford, and at which point they did make cameras. He said, look, here's my letter of recommendation. I work with Leica as a designer. I'd love to come and work with you and come up with a camera. Uh, he made the Ilford Witnesses. So there again, it's a little bit of a tie to Leica. Some of these, well, they're known as Barmax or screw threads. Some of it's just that they're absolutely in beautiful condition. So hence I kept them. We have the Leica SLs. This is really Leica's early days of doing an SLR cam uh, camera. That's a little bit of what those items are there independently made by an underwater housing for a screw for it again not a lot of value but if you remember the APS-C system Leica did make a couple of APS-C cameras that's where that lies oh going back to stuff with history this is a Leica 3 the gentleman that owned it had been up Everest this camera hasn't actually been up Everest he actually did lose his equipment it was then on another expedition. This is the camera and the box that was sent to us, a survey ship, uh, that Leica said to him from the factory and supplied him with a replacement camera to replace the one he lost. And what's this like a meter you've just picked up? What is that? Well, again, obviously, I say obviously, these cameras never had light meters in them in their day. Leica themselves didn't make meters. They had another people like Western Master make them so it's an independently manufactured meter but it says Leica meter on it so not made by Leica but it's correct period to that camera it didn't come with this but I just thought I'd keep it because it matches nicely a lot of people say to me why have you got a walking stick in fact three of them in your cabinet these are crazy, I don't know why, in a way, they're not even made in their days, but if we... Screw it. 
there is actually a tripod inside and likewise inside this one as well. So we have two tripods. There's an old British one here, but obviously you can see that's a tripod when you unscrew the handle. But these were quite clever because you, you wouldn't necessarily realize. But who makes these? Uh, without me actually looking at the details, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased there's something in here you don't know about. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't read it up. But it, it's nice because people with that sort of throw customers out like, why have you got two walking sticks in your cabinet? <laughs> There's your answer because they're tripods. The current 35mm Simicron Apo. So when the first of these were distributed and sent, just by pure luck and coincidence, okay, it's the first one off the production line. So the number itself, okay, isn't one that ends 0, 0, 0, 1. I mean, I don't know if you can catch it in there, but yes, it is number one off the production line. That was just pure luck that it arrived here. Needless to say, we're a bit persuading with Frank, we had relinquished it and I've got it back, but Frank knows I don't ever want to sell these things. So very fortunate to have number one of, which is obviously a current lens. So uh, that's that. Okay. Terry O'Neill, great British photographer. You've named a Hollywood star, Terry, as photographed her, okay? Uh, in honor of this, Lycra, just a few years ago, decided to make a special edition Terry O'Neill camera, which is the MP. They recreated his signature, as you can see there. Originally, we were actually gonna make 50 of them, but it transpires they only produced 35. There's actually also got a 50 mil 1.4 Summerlux Aspheric on it and they're all numbered. Um, it's a bit of a long story, I won't go all the way around, but basically this is number one of 35. It also comes with the Audrey Hepburn print. So I was, very, again, very fortunate to end up with number one. Some people might be familiar with, I mentioned before briefly about a Millennium M6 camera. In the year 2000, like I decided they would make 2000 cameras, numbering them one to 2000. They'd also supply it with three different lenses and you'll be able to then get the matching number of your camera to match in the lenses. And as I say, there were 2,000 in black paint. For the Asian market or Japanese market, they also decided to make 300 green versions of them. There was no, as far as I'm aware, there was no lens to match it. Yeah, so it's an MP, but instead of being in the black paint finish, it's a green finish and this off, I don't know what colour you'd call it, off green or whatever, on the lever out. It's actually number 242 of 300. Don't see that very often. Leica have made various watches during their history and they, as they currently do make some special watches. All these are branded with a Leica brand on them. Makes them quite nice to have. Here's a quirky one, I've called it. In 1983, Leica were celebrating an anniversary and they decided to take the M4P and engrave it, okay, with 1913 to 1983, which is 50 years anniversary. I'm not sure how many they made, they're all engraved, if you actually look at this one, oh, then maybe you can get in close enough. On the my closest focus distance, as we know with Leica okay. lenses. <laughs> this one actually has been missing grade by Leica as 1813, which isn't bad going because the camera and photography hadn't even been invented then. So this was just purely a mistake. Someone at the factory wasn't paying attention with his engraving machine and misengraved it. It was known to be, I believe, about six have come out on the market. That's cool, I'm getting involved. Uh, the, frat. So it's the transitional version three, isn't it? When they yeah. the first batch of these had a gnarled uh, focusing ring. Because the no, normally they don't. They had have the slotted. Yeah. Um, so there's a really, really small Bad. volume of those where they were. This is the 50mm F2 Summicron. Commonly known as a, a transitional because it's very early uh, Summicron but you'll notice it has a milled edge or even like a, a grip. Later on, this just became a solid ring with just milling all the way around. So it's 
known as a transitional. There aren't so many of these about. 35 mil Summerlux black paint. It doesn't necessarily mean all this is black paint, but the, the release is black paint, although it's worn to brass, and these two rims are black paint. Later on, those things all became chrome. Talking of the heritage lenses earlier on, I really ought to dust this camera. Um, they also reproduced just a few years ago the 50mm 1.2 Noctrilux lens. Okay. Uh, this is an original 50mm 1.2 with the hood, which might say well, why you mention the hood. Believe me, the hoods are like as well, probably rarer than the lenses, have probably got lost over the years. Uh, but a lot of people would love to get hold of original ones of these. You can buy it. We have a current recreation of it, like a still produced that you can buy. When they launched the recreation, they also made only a hundred chrome versions of the same lens. There's only 100 of those in the chrome finish. Yeah, if we're talking lenses. So quite a few years ago, Leica produced the 28mm f2 in chrome. And they were just normal stock as we all thought. Sold, worked somewhere, sold them, phoned up, ordered some more, and I said, oh no, it's finished. So I said, well, how can it be finished? It's not, it's only been a, you know, a few months. So they said, no, no, it's just something we're trialing. And basically, previously, all the chrome lenses were on brass. And this is on an alloy. And I think they were testing the market to see whether people would buy a chrome lens on an aluminium alloy barrel. So, quite rare to find. Going back a, not terribly long, what, just a few years ago, Leica then released the 21mm uh, Super Elmar 21mm 3.4. Added delivery, the first lot came in, I think we had five delivered got them all in, then got a frantic phone call from Leica saying, have you sent these lenses out to customers? And I was like, no, they've only just come today. They said, well, don't send them. Uh, there's a little bit of an issue. Can you return them? Yeah, no problem. Return the five lenses. Said to me they were going to be re-greased. Three or four months later, still had not them back. Oh, what's going on? Spoke to them, turned out they had to change the entire helicoil mount of the lenses and then they supplied the new ones. But the new ones, the barrel was different. It actually got a step at this point. It comes out and goes in. I can, I have got one over there if you wanted to see them side by side. And of course, I'm kicking myself. I've returned five lenses uh, to prove to be a mistake. And I mean, oh, what? we would know to keep it. And I regretted it. Fortunately, I got a phone call from someone very kindly that was working at like a store in London that says, I have a, they said, they kept one for display. And I was like, yes, please, I'd, I'd love to buy it off you. Just bought it, normal price. So if you ever see a 2134 and the barrel sides are straight, grab it because they were all meant to be returned, right? And not end up on the market. So extremely rare. The tri lens, which was incredibly like piece of engineering, because if you think of uh, a rangefinder camera, you can't have a zoom on it, but Leica came up with this tri -Elmar. As I showed you earlier on, we'll just grab one. Get out of this one. Internally, the design and the work to get this to change the bright line frames was a nightmare for Leica. They made approximately 400 chrome versions of it. They do turn up from there and again, but hence when one came my way, I decided to keep it. Okay, 50mm F2 Summacron. Fast synchronization on a focal plane cloth, okay, is not, is not high whatsoever. It's quite a low, like a 30th of a second. Of course, if you're trying to do flash photography and you want something faster, that's really difficult. So like I produce a lens that would then couple to the body. This is this coupling is not the original, unfortunately, it obviously got separated. But there is a flash PC socket on the side, okay, and there is a Compor shutter inside the lens itself. Okay, so the idea being, when you would fire this button, it would fire the, the lens would fire, 
PC socket would go off, but you could basically fire a much higher flash sync speed of a hundredth and two hundredth of a second, as opposed to the thirtieth of a second. So there's only about 400 of this lens in existence. There we go, that's better. And there we go. One other thing I'd like to sort of show and mention, I don't know about all other manufacturers in the industry, and we'll try and get this out, see if it would just do it up. Okay, it's a wind-on mechanism, okay, I don't know if it's primed, it's quite a, a palaver, but you could fire the shutter, and wind it on, okay, and take pictures, so it's almost like a motor drive or a remote release. I think Leica, as a manufacturer, probably made more quirky accessories than any other manufacturer. Again, there are books that show you some of the most insane little accessories other manufacturers probably just didn't make it, you know, or certainly didn't make the volume that Leica made. So that's really, if you like, a little tour of the museum of red dot cameras. I hope you enjoyed it. And anytime you're passing and you're in London, please come in and I'm more than happy to show you this. Be warned, you probably won't get in and out in a minute or two. That's the only thing. And if I show you my iPad, run. <laughs>